people would call Daniel Dreer. Raise your right hand, sir. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, sir. Please have a seat. Speak loudly in the microphone. Spell your first and last name. <laughs> Daniel Drior, D-A-N-I-E-L-D-R-E-W-Y-O-R. -E -E Sir, where are you employed? By the Michigan Department of State Police. And how long have you been with the Michigan State Police? Just over 10 years, ma'am. What's your current role? I'm a detective sergeant in our special investigation section. How long have you been a detective sergeant in that capacity? Um, be two and a half years this summer. Okay. And um, what kind of training do you have? In order to become a trooper with the Michigan State Police, you have to attend the Michigan State Police Trooper Recruit School. Uh, subsequently, you're on a field training program to become a road patrol trooper. Um, after that portion of your training, you're then a, a solo trooper, and then we have continued training. Specific to this role, I've attended numerous courses on death investigation, uh, special investigation tactics, interview interrogation, analyzing evidence, um, numerous things related to investigating violent crime or crimes of a more serious nature. Okay. Do you have any schooling? Oh, yes, ma'am. I have an associate's degree. Okay. And what would that associate's degree be in? In business. At some point, did you become involved in the investigation with D. Warner? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And in what capacity? I was contacted by the Illinois County Sheriff's Office uh, around March, um, two years ago, <coughs> and they asked for assistance in investigating her disappearance. When you say March, two years ago, 2022? Yes. March, okay. And so they, at that point, it was to assist in the investigation? That's correct. All right. And who, who uh, were you working with from the Illinois County Sheriff's Department? Uh, there were several people involved. My primary contact was Detective Greca. Okay. And... I'm sorry, didn't Detective Greca, sorry, Judge. Okay. And at some point, did you take this case on full time? Yes. And when was that? That was um, March, I'm sorry, excuse me, August of the same year. Okay. When you became involved, either with the sheriff's department assist or when you took it over full time, um, what did you do first? Now, initially when I first became involved in aiding the sheriff's department, my primary goal, um, aside from getting up to, I'll say speed, so to speak, just becoming more um, knowledgeable on the case and circumstances, was due to the length of time since the incident, it had been almost a year, my primary goal was to make sure we had um, collected and possessed all of the evidence that could go away. So certain evidence expires over time. My primary goal, let's figure out what that is and make sure we have that. Okay, and as a result of that, what did you do? Uh, we did do a uh, search warrant back at the Munker Road residence. Okay. Do you recall what date that was? I don't. It was um, within the first couple of months of assisting, so that spring going into summer of 22. Okay, and the, when you say on the Munger Road home, um, what did that search warrant entail? Uh, that search warrant was for uh, the residence that Dean Dale Warner had um, lived in up till uh, 425 21, and all of the outbuildings uh, on that property, uh, including vehicles. Um, the primary reason for the search warrant was electronic devices, but other things were covered in that warrant also. Okay. Was there land associated with that Munger Road residence? Uh, yes, the landing uh, surrounding curtilage. Okay, do you know how much land was associated with that particular property? Uh, I'd be estimating, ma'am. Okay, can you give me an approximate? Uh, it's about 20 acres, I think. Okay. And did you, did you seize electronics on that particular um, day? Yes. All right. Did you do any other search warrants not necessarily that day did you yourself draft any other search warrants when you took this case over uh, i did other search warrants in the assisting capacity okay. leading up before august okay and what what were you um doing search warrants for like what types of items or property or um, there was a search warrant in close proximity to that one for uh, an additional electronic device 
Um, I, I can't recall if those search warrants included the seizing of the devices and the forensic search of it, but I may have drafted another one to actually search the devices that were seized. And I'm sure there's a couple more that I drafted in an assisting capacity, but I can't recall what they were. Okay. During the execution of those search warrants, um, <coughs> did you ever come across Dee's physical phone? Um, a phone that was, I, I, I apologize, I'll reword that, a phone that was identified as Dee's physical phone. Uh, that's kind of a complicated answer. So we seized devices that we now know were her previous phones, so maybe a phone that she had in years past. I came in contact with a phone that had her data on it that she never possessed, but as far as the phone that she would have been in possession of uh, the weeks and days leading up to her disappearance, no. So in other words, the phone that she would have possessed mm -hmm. on the weekend of 425-21, we have never discovered that phone, no ma'am. Okay. Once you took the investigation over from the Sheriff's Department, did you draft any other search warrants? Yes. Okay, and what were those search warrants for? Um, that, that's a long list, ma'am. We did uh, search warrants for uh, health care records, phone records. Uh, we searched numerous vehicles a number of different ways. We got records from OnStar. We got records for social media. Uh, we did uh, several land searches. Uh, we searched residences of secondary parties, their electronic devices. Uh, we've done uh, search warrants for uh, what I'll refer to as internet-related accounts. So uh, Google, for instance, several uh, search warrants to Google, to Yahoo. Um, I can't think of, uh, we've done um, search warrants for uh, things of a biological nature through our lab. What about bank accounts? Uh, thank you, ma'am. Yes, we did uh, numerous financial search warrants for several different institutions, banking institutions. Okay. And um, credit as well, uh, credit check <laughs> essentially, search warrant for the credit bureaus. When you say you did several search warrants for bank accounts, um, do you know, did you get data back from as a result of those? Yes. All right, and how many um, bank accounts do you believe you discovered as a result of that? Uh, those search warrants were done in phases, so um, only because of discovering new accounts and getting search warrants. In total, I'd be estimating how many total accounts there were associated with this case. It would be, I would say, over a dozen. Okay, when you say associated with this case, what do you mean by that? There were bank accounts associated with Just D. Warner. There okay. are bank accounts associated with their business entities. There are bank accounts associated with just Dale Warner. There are bank accounts associated with uh, Dale Warner and another party. Um, there are bank accounts associated with just Zach Bach. There are bank accounts associated with uh, another gentleman, uh, Chris Wallach. Okay, you said there are bank accounts associated with Dale and Zach? Um, not those two together. Okay. Sorry That's if I misspoke. I no. I, uh, D and Zach, I may have misspoke. D and Zach. Okay. Uh, had accounts associated together. Okay. And let's focus on these personal accounts for a minute, okay? Did you review all those records that you received back from the bank on her accounts? Yes. Okay, and did you notice a, a, a pattern First off, let's start. When did the date range start for the records that you received? Um, most of the bank records that we received date back to uh, January of 2020. Okay, and there, what would... If, if I may, ma'am. There are some records that we uh, requested for a larger span of time, but those are not her sole accounts. Okay. What's the end date on the search warrants? Uh, the end date um, is written to present day, would be the language in my search warrant. So if I'm writing the search warrant on August 1st, 2023, it's going to give me to information to that day. Okay. <clears throat> when you reviewed those bank statements that were the sole ownership of D. Warner, did you 
look at a pattern between January 2020 and April 25th, 2021? Um, yes. Okay. And can you describe, um, if you can, like on a monthly basis, what's the typical pattern for that? Objection. This is going to be based on hearsay. I don't believe these records, well, these records have not been admitted, but I also don't believe there are proposed records. And I'm specifically looking at proposed exhibit 15 with the listing on there. I don't see anything related to financial records. That is correct. They are, um, again, they're business records, which he is relying uh, on to make his conclusions. I can print every single statement and bring them down for the court. I will allow it in for your example. Thank you. Can you repeat the question, please? Yes. Tell me about the pattern of activity starting in January 2020 through April 25th, 2021 on a monthly basis. What did that monthly base um, usage look like? <laughs> There were several accounts uh, that had just D. Warner's name on them. Their uses um, were for different things, so it's hard to put them all in the same bucket. But essentially, the accounts had uh, regular use throughout the months. Can you define what you mean by regular use? There was deposits and withdrawals into the accounts on a regular basis. Okay. Regular meaning um, some might be multiple times a week, some might be once a week, but each of those accounts in her name essentially have those similar types of transaction history. Were there times where it was every single day there were transactions being made? Uh, yes. Maybe not every single day for the full month, but there would be consecutive days on a consistent basis. <laughs> okay. And that was just for the accounts in D's name alone? Yes. Okay. Now, how many business accounts did you get bank statements for? Um, has to be at least five or six. I'm not certain how many. Okay. And again, give me the time frame that we're looking at on those. Some of them date back to all the way of uh, 2019. Uh, some were just at 2020 to April or to present day when I wrote the warrant. So it depends on the business. And I'm not certain if from memory I could differentiate for you. Okay. Were any of those business accounts listed as the bank with a sole owner? Yes. Do you recall um, how many of those accounts were listed with a sole owner? Um, I, I don't. And, and now that I now that you say that, ma'am. The business accounts might all have someone else associated with it. For instance, I'm thinking of of um, DW. I'm near certain that D and Zach were on that account. Now that I say that, I'm not certain that D had any business account with no one else on it. Okay, so when you say associated <coughs> with, do you mean it could be not a joint owner or an authorized signer or anything in that capacity? That combination or one or the other, yes ma'am. Okay. And I'm sorry, how many business accounts did you say there were? Uh, no less than five or six. Okay. That's, that's a complicated answer because some of the businesses that they had had previous banks, bank accounts also. So they may only have four or five businesses on paper, but we might have 10 different accounts. Does that make sense? They might have moved institutions yeah. or something like that. On the accounts solely owned by D, was there a balance on that account on April 25th, 2021? I'd ask whether the, are we on business now or this is personal or business? And I did hear him say originally sole owner, but then there might have been someone else associated. So if he doesn't have the clear answer, I'd ask him to refresh his memory because this is getting a little vague. I think there might have been someone else. I mean, I, I don't even think he has the personal knowledge for some of this. I, I think we do need some clarification about this last question specifically. The sole 
the accounts owned solely by D that were her personal accounts, not the business accounts. Was there a balance on those on April 25th, 2021? Uh, yes, there was cash available on those accounts. Okay. And <clears throat> after April 25th, 2021, were there any transactions on those personal accounts that you just testified to? Um, yes, there were transactions on those accounts which were attributed to, um, in essence, a conservator taking the account over. Okay. Were so there... the transactions were not conducted by D. Warner, if that makes sense. Okay. Were there any deposits put in that account after April 25th, 2021? Uh, yes, there were um, payroll deposits. Okay. And were there any withdrawals after April 25th, 2021 that were not attributable to the conservator? No, ma'am. You indicated that you executed some search warrants on medical, is that correct? Uh, for medical records and for uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield. Okay, so Blue Cross Blue Shield, how far back did your request for records go? Uh, through January of 2020. Okay, and did you receive those records? Yes. And would that be the same thing? It was to present day whenever you executed the search warrant? Yes. Okay. Can you give me um, an approximate month and year that you executed that search warrant? Um, I believe that was the fall or winter of, uh, I'm not sure, ma'am, I'm sorry. I want to say the fall or winter of 23, but I could have done it earlier. Okay. Did you review the records that you received back from Blue Cross Blue Shield? Yes. Okay, and starting in January 2022 up to April 25th, 2021, did you notice any type of pattern in there? use of that medical? January 2020 to April 2020? January 2020 to April 2021, I apologize. I'm sorry, I think I still misheard you. January of 2020 or 2021? January of 2020. That's when you said you wrote Correct. start date. Okay, so January 2020 through April 25th, 2021. Do you see a pattern of use on that Blue Cross Blue Shield? Yes. Okay, describe that to me. For me. Uh, there are two different avenues to explain her uh, health insurance coverage and use. Essentially, you have um, uh, medical billing and then her prescription billing. Okay. Do you have let's, a preference? Let's talk about the medical first. Okay. Tell me about the pattern. Uh, she had um, numerous uses per month very consistently in that time span. So there were times she would have uh, what appeared to be three or four medical billings a week. Um, it would be very difficult to find a singular week that she didn't have one. And most of those times are attributed to a vacation where she's out of town. After April 25th, 2021, is there any medical use on the Blue Cross Blue Shield medical portion? No. And you discussed prescriptions? Yes. All right. Tell me about that. The prescription billings on the account um, are very similar in activity as described as the doctors. Uh, there are um, numerous billings per month very consistently in that time span. Uh, it appears that she picked up uh, prescriptions uh, very regularly. Perhaps not weekly, but very close. And again, can you give me a time frame on that? That Was that also January 2020? Yes. Okay. After April 25th, 2021, is there any activity for prescriptions? Uh, yes. Okay, tell me about that. There were two transactions at a CVS pharmacy in Tecumseh. Um, there were uh, prescriptions that were auto-filled that weren't picked up. So CVS charged Blue Cross Blue Shield when they weren't picked up after a certain amount of time that was then refunded back to CVS 
or I'm sorry, refunded back to Blue Cross from CVS. Any activity after that? No. You indicated that you did search warrants for social media? Yes. And what in particular did you do those search warrants for? For um, Snapchat and Facebook. Okay, when you say Facebook, um, Facebook, is Facebook and Facebook Messenger the same, or do you have to do separate our search warrants? Or <coughs> Our search warrant contained um, a request for both record sets. Okay. And what was the request date range for those items? I don't recall the start. Um, I want to say it's also January of 2020, but I'm not certain. And it would have been written to present date whenever that search warrant was authored. When you were writing the search warrants for all these, um, some of these different things, um, did you expand the time frame for any particular reason? Yes, I, um, I expanded that time frame on the front end dating backward to establish a basic pattern of life. Okay. And specific with Facebook, it was to uh, see if I could find any um, communications through Messenger that may not have been on her phone. For instance, if she was messaging somebody that perhaps other people didn't know about. Okay. Did you, in fact, get records back from Facebook? Yes. Okay. And... Again, is that the same that the um, end date for those requests would be whatever date that you requested them? Yes. Okay. And did you review the documents that you received back from Facebook? Yes. And was there a pattern of activity on Facebook? Yes. Okay. Tell me about that. Uh, the pattern was very regular. So uh, things were posted in a regular capacity, messages were exchanged with friends in a regular capacity, um, near daily use, essentially, on a, on a daily, um, daily occurrence of her interacting with Facebook in some way. Okay. Um, when you say interacting with Facebook in some way, are you also referring to Messenger? Because I, for some reason I look at them differently in my head. So is there some different data you have for Messenger, or is that the same? Uh, the messaging data is kind of intermingled. So when I say interacting, I mean each day she's posting something, posting something on someone else's page, for instance, commenting on something, or sending a message. I kind of think of it as using Facebook in those capacities. Okay. You indicated you did a search warrant for Snapchat? Yes. Did you receive any data back from them? I received a response that contained no data. And are you familiar with Snapchat? I am. Do you have an explanation of why there is uh, no data? Yes. Okay. Tell me. Uh, Snapchat, by its nature, is meant to um, get rid of the messages and interactions you have with people. So it is not uncommon for us to get search warrant results that say they have no results, especially given the length of time in between, um, in between when she was last seen and when I authored the search warrant, it had been at least a year, so I wasn't surprised to see that there was no response. You did search warrants for a lot of electronics, correct? Yes. All right, and let's talk specifically about um, cell phones. Did you do a search warrant for something called fog? Yes. Okay, tell me what that's about. Um, Fog is essentially the um, one of the companies that collects and sells your information for advertisers. For instance, maybe you've driven by the same Radio Shack every day for a month. You're going to start receiving ads on your phone specific to that Radio Shack, hypothetically. So Fog is the housing body of that housing data, essentially tracking your phone's location, your common routes, and they're selling that to advertisers that target you and where you go. Okay. And um, what was the purpose of doing that fog search warrant? Uh, that type of um, 
electronic data capture is valuable for investigators when they're looking for a particular device that may not be known in a particular geography at a particular time. For instance, if I'm looking for someone at the Munger Road Farm during a certain time and it's an unknown electronic device, fog may have captured that phone device. Okay. Did you get a response from fog? Yes. Okay. And what was the result of that? Uh, no devices were detected at the farm uh, during the weekend of 425-21. No devices or no unknown devices? Um, I believe there were no devices. Okay. So fog uh, is, does, does not claim to be 100%. Uh, they, have, um, they have documentation about doing a particular data set at Ford Field during a football game, for instance, and I forget the percentage, but it, it was on every device that was there. Okay. And... Geofence. Did you do a search warrant? A geofence search warrant? That's Google. Yes, ma'am. Google. Okay. Can you geofence? Geo Geo Can you explain what that one is? A geofence search warrant is using um, similar technology as I described with Fog. However, <laughs> it's specific to Google. So any application on a phone or mobile device that's running a Google-based application or Android application supported by Google is going to be giving, um, typically, giving electronic data to Google. Um, you essentially draw a hypothetical square around an area and tell Google, I want every device that was in this area at this particular time. Okay, and what, did, what area did you tell Google that you wanted? They have a, a minimum area. I, I, I forget how uh, small it can be, but essentially it was driven, overlaid um, over top of the Munger farm. Okay. When you say the farm, what do you mean? Uh, I mean the uh, the residents and the surrounding curtilage, as small as I could make that window. Okay. On four twenty five twenty one was the data set. Okay, four twenty five twenty one. Is there a time frame? I think it went from um, five or six a.m. till ten a.m. Okay. Somewhere in there, I'm not certain. Did you get results back for that? Yes. Okay, and what were those? Uh, we did have one device detected within that area. Okay. And when you say um, it's Google, so do I have to be connected to a Wi-Fi or anything like that for my phone to interact with this particular uh, geofence? You have to have some form of data connection. And you have to have your phone has to be operating uh, a Google or Android supported app that's allowing location data. Okay. You said you located one device in yes. that. Yes. Okay. And were you able to identify the owner of that device? Yes. Okay. And who was that? Dustin Lally. Okay. <coughs> and. Who is Dustin Lally? Uh, Dustin Lally is uh, the romantic partner of Raquel, Dee's daughter. Okay. I know you testified that you didn't have <clears throat> Dee's physical phone that she, she owned on the day she went missing, but did you um, do a search warrant for her phone data? Yes. Okay. So I might use the wrong terms. Feel free to correct me if you want. So when I say phone data, I mean anything that would have been within, within her phone at the time she went missing, okay? okay? When I say phone, I don't mean physical phone. I mean is iCloud or whatever the device uses, okay? So who do you send that, the search warrant for her phone to? Um, there's a couple of ways to answer that question. So because her known phone was an Apple iPhone, search warrants were sent to Apple to get that information. Okay. However, we served search warrants to Dale Warner for the phone that possessed her data. Okay. Did you also search, uh, serve any search warrants to Verizon? That's correct. Okay. And um, do you have a time frame for the records that you requested from Verizon? 
there were several search warrants served for, uh, to Verizon. Uh, my search warrant uh, was not drafted until 2022. The Sheriff's Department did search warrants in 2021, um, beginning of May 2021. There was also a request for exigent information on 425-21. Did you review the Verizon records for Dean Warner that you received? Yes. Okay. And was there a pattern of use on her phone? Yes. Okay. And what applications or um, things were being used on her phone? I don't know if I said that right. So, like, you, you know, you can make a phone call, you can text, you can do all kinds of things on your phone. What was she using on her phone? Uh, with the records that we received, we're only able to see her uh, mobile phone and data use, essentially. So whatever Verizon and the iCloud report, which are phone calls, uh, text messages, data usage for apps, it doesn't specifically tell you how much data you're using, and then Apple messages. Now, specific to the iCloud for D Warner, that's the one that is that the one that you just testified that you served on Apple. Um, yes, and that that search warrant, if I can expand a little Excuse bit. Excuse me, Ryan. Maybe you approach. Yes. Thank you. If you are seen doing that, you will be removed and banned from the courtroom. That is absolutely not allowed and will not be permitted. I think we left off with the iCloud for D. Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. If I could expand on those search warrants. Yes, please. Search warrants were served initially by the county. Uh, there was an issue with retrieving some of that data. Uh, we then made a request for that same data set which was delivered, and then we did an additional search warrant, um, uh, several additional search warrants to Apple for more data. Okay, and was that the iCloud data that you received in response to that? Yes. Okay, and <coughs> tell me what, the, what, what is the cloud? What is iCloud? The cloud is Apple's, uh, the iCloud is Apple's way of uh, managing and storing user data. So depending on how you set up your phone is going to dictate what uh, your phone is sending to the cloud, so to speak. In case you lose your device, they're able to give you back everything you had saved on it. Okay. And what types of things um, did Dee have saved in her iCloud? Uh, primarily messages and um, pictures. Okay. So Apple messages, pictures. There's some location data. Uh, there were some other application data, but the bulk of that Apple iCloud dump is uh, contacts through Messenger and photos. Okay. And the iCloud data you get, you, you received, I apologize, um, went back years before 2021. Is that accurate? Yes. Okay, do you remember the date that it goes back to? Um, I'm near certain we have data going back to 2017. Okay. And when you're reviewing that data for the iCloud, is there a pattern of activity on there? Uh, yes. Okay. And 
let's talk first about um, text messaging. Was there a pattern of text messages? Um, through the iCloud, I'm not being cute, would be iMessages or Apple Messages. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so the, so no, I thank you for correcting me. So the, the iMessages do not get saved in the iCloud, is that what you're saying? Um, the opposite. Those are the only messages saved in the iCloud. So if you were to possess a uh, iPhone supported by Verizon, if you send an Android user a text message, Verizon's going to have that record. If you send another Apple person an iPhone user, um, an Apple message, that will be stored in the cloud. Okay, so your review of the cloud is Apple to Apple as far as text messages go? Correct. Okay, was there a pattern of use in those text messages? Uh, yes. Okay, tell me what the use looked like for, let's say, um, a period of January 2020 through April 25th, 2021. Uh, there was um, hundreds of messages exchanged each day. Okay. And let's talk about phone calls or voice calls. Is that what it's called, voice calls? Okay. Is that a yes? Yep, well, say well, that would not be uh, necessarily supported through the iCloud, though. That would be through Verizon. Okay. So the voice calls are going to be through Verizon. Correct. Okay. So you didn't see any evidence of that in the iCloud? There might be some call logs, but... Um, I didn't analyze that data for the uh, for the signs of life that you're getting to. Okay, all right. Um, did so you didn't analyze any phone call data for? Not from the cloud. That would be from Verizon. So you did for Verizon. Correct. Okay, tell me what kind of pattern you uh, noticed there. Um, the average day would consist of uh, more than ten phone calls per day, incoming and outcoming. Okay, and. <coughs> Pictures? Uh, yes, a very regular exchange of pictures through her phone, yes. Okay, what do you mean exchange? Uh, receiving and sending. Okay. Um, okay. After April 25th, 2021, is there any activity, um, first let's talk about the iCloud, any activity on the iCloud? The activity related to the iCloud after 425.21 is either due to um, an investigator's manipulation. We did access her iCloud to an attempt to retrieve some data. Okay. Uh, or on at least two different instances, um, uh, Dale Warner uh, obtained a phone and put her iCloud information on it, I believe, to further the business. So we could use that information for the business, the, that phone number. Okay. Essentially, her phone number was tied to her cloud account, and he activated that phone, in my understanding, to use as a business phone, and so that was an activity on her cloud account. As far as the Verizon records that you reviewed, are there any phone calls from D. Warner's um, number after 4-25-2021? Uh, there was uh, some very limited activity. Um, last winter and it was it was um, the situation I previously described they had reactivated that phone number for the business and there were some calls made on that line okay so the situation you're talking about where Dale um, got a new phone and downloaded this um, what, what is it, you download the iCloud to the new phone? That's correct. Okay, and so May 10th of what year? Did you do a search warrant for that uh, phone? Uh, we did a search warrant for that phone on uh, May 10th of 22. Of 22, okay. And what was, this, what was the search warrant um, for? What were you gonna do? Um, well, we had done a search warrant just previous to that at the Munger residence to retrieve electronic devices. Okay. Uh, while there, I had contact with Dale Warner and asked him, I knew of this specific phone that he had with this iCloud information, and I asked him, where is that phone? His answer was, he pointed to the devices on the table and said, you have it. 
Okay. So you asked for the specific phone that he had D's information on? Correct. Okay. And he told you you already had it? Correct. Okay. And then did you have it? No. Okay. At some point you come to realize that Dale still has that phone in his possession? Yes. How is that? We had collected, um, there must be over 100 Apple devices or electronic devices from the house that day. Okay. Uh, I hadn't yet reconciled each device and what it was. Um, this is probably a day or two later. Um, in an effort to help him continue you know, his life and his business, I told him I would work to get him certain devices back as fast as possible. His uh, primary iPad, for instance, business computers. He contacts me to schedule that, and he calls me from Dee's phone number. Okay, did you ask him about that? I waited until I hung up and then took action to go and retrieve that device, obviously realizing that he had it. Okay, and uh, did you get another search warrant for that? I did. And where did you get that phone from? Um, we went back to the, um, the residence on Munger Road and made contact with Dale initially at the office. Okay, and did you ask him about that phone? I did. Tell me about that conversation. Uh, Dale stated, uh, upon arriving, I informed Dale that we needed that phone. Um, I, I can't recall how I came to know that it was in a vehicle parked in front of the office. I'm not sure if Dale told me that or someone else. In any case, I discovered it was in a vehicle parked just a few feet away in the office, and Dale was uh, not complying with giving me that device. Okay, what do you mean not compliant? I told him that he needed to provide it, and he did not want to do so. He refused. Uh, it appears I forgot to ask you when we talked about the Facebook, um, the records, after April 25th, 2021, do you see any activity on Dee's Facebook? No. As part of your investigation, when you took over this, um, what else did you do? Um, upon the state police uh, receiving investigation in the sheriff's department, um, our first step was to do a little housekeeping and get the case organized. So as a transfer of property, we received thousands of pages of documents. Uh, we began to organize it um, so we could um, essentially start the investigation over. So that included um, conducting our own interviews, uh, we were already evaluating electronic media based on the search warrants I just described to you, so we were continuing to do that, but as the housing agency instead of an assisting capacity. Um, did you also, you said you conducted your own interviews. Did you watch any of the uh, original Lenawee County Sheriff's Department body cams? Yes. Okay. And... Do you recall interviewing Brian Bush? Yes. Do you know what date that was? Uh, that was the, f the first week of June of last year, I believe. And where did you meet Brian Bush at? I first came in contact with him at his residence. Okay. And... Um, did you have a discussion with Brian about the GPS tracker for the Hummer? Yes. Okay. And did he indicate to you? Objection, hearsay. It's a prior inconsistent statement. I questioned Brian Bush about it. There were certain statements that he eventually acknowledged that he made, and there were other statements that he flat out denied. This is absolutely not hearsay as a prior inconsistent statement which she could have addressed with Mr. Bush when he was on the stand, not getting it hearsay through Detective Sergeant York. I did question Mr. Bush about it, and again, he denied this portion of it. Did Brian Bush tell you about the Hummer tracker? Yes. Okay. Did he tell you what Dale asked him to do? He stated uh, Dale came to him and said, uh, I need you to buy me a tracker for the Hummer. Okay. 
and did he tell you what Dale wanted the tracker for? Uh, so he could um, spy on Dee because he thought she was having an affair. Okay. Did you ask him if there was any other use or purpose for that tracker? Uh, I did. Okay, and what was his response? He stated no. Okay. Did you also speak to Mr. Bush about Dale's statements to him the morning of April 25th, 2021? Uh, yes. Okay. And did he tell you that Dale told him that there was a big argument that night before? Yes. Okay. Did he tell you that the argument... Your Honor, I am going to object again as to leading. And so it's just essentially the prosecutor asking leading questions, and then now Detective Drury are saying yes. Thank you. Did Brian tell you what Dale told him the argument was about? Yes. Okay. What did he tell you? Brian stated Dale told him that the argument on the evening of 4-24-21 was because Dale confronted her about money and cheating. Did you talk to Brian Bush about the safe that was placed in the home? Or the camera, I apologize, the camera, the trail cam that was placed in the home? Yes. Okay. And did he indicate to you what the purpose for that was for? Yes. Okay, and what was the purpose? Brian stated uh, Dale was, um, Dale uh, knew about a safe that was some form of secret upstairs in Zach's room, and there were uh, documents and maybe secret money in there, and he wanted the camera to see who was coming and going from that safe. Okay, did, when he said who was coming and going, was he specific about who was coming and going? Uh, in particular, Zach. Okay, did he say anything at all about strangers coming in? No. Did you come into possession of um, surveillance video mm -hmm. from the Munger farm? Yes. And how did you come into possession of that? That was in the transfer of property from the Lenway County Sheriff's Office to our department. Okay. And did you review any of that data? Yes. And did you... do anything in particular with that surveillance video? Uh, there were several things that we did, yes. Okay, and tell me what you did. Um, one of the first steps that we took was to verify that the time in the video was accurate. Okay, and tell me how you did that. Uh, at first glance, the, the, the video clearly had a discrepancy. There's a, uh, a time on the video, I think it's in the upper right-hand corner, it says one date and time and that doesn't appear to be coinciding with the actual date and time. Are there two dates and times when you're looking at this surveillance video, or, or tell me what I see when I'm looking at it? Yes, I, I believe the, the time in the upper right-hand corner is um, what the camera or the DVR is set to, and the time in the upper left-hand corner is what the, uh, I believe the milestone application has the time to be. Okay, so one's the actual DVR and one's for the actual security? system is that the, the software system the camera runs on I believe yes ma'am okay and you said you had to figure out the time discrepancy um, what did you do to try to determine the time discrepancy uh, by the use of detective records body cam we knew that time to be accurate because it's cloud supported it's what cloud supported just what explain that to me what that what does that mean the internet is continually telling that um, that camera what time it is okay so you compared that to the surveillance? That's correct. All right. And what was the time discrepancy? Essentially, there was a minute and 35 second discrepancy with the time in the upper left-hand corner of the video. So if the camera time says that it's 7, it's really 7.01 and 35 seconds. So you would add the 1 minute and 35 seconds? Is that on the end? To adjust it to what the real time is, correct. Okay. The time in the upper left-hand corner. Yes, ma'am.
Did you also do any search warrants for, um, as a result of your conversation with Brian Bush? Uh, yes. Okay. And who did you uh, send that particular request to? Uh, my, there were search warrants done in preparation for contact with Brian Bush and search warrants done afterward. I'm not sure which ones you're referring to. Okay. Did you do any search warrant as it related to the GPS device? Yes. Was that as a result of speaking with Brian Bush as a, or as a result of something else? That was as a, as a result of something else. Okay. And who did you serve this search warrant on? Um, the company is Vinks by Agnick LLC. Did you get a response from Vinks? Yes. Okay. And what format did they send you those records in? Uh, I received a PDF document and an Excel spreadsheet. May I approach the witness? Yes. I've handed you people's, um, it's already been marked as people's proposed six. Uh, what is that document? Uh, this appears to be the, or is the Excel spreadsheet that I received in response to that warrant. Okay. And what's the um, username on that? Uh, the username is uh, Bush5411. Okay. What's the start date on that? Uh, the start date is 1-11 of 2020. Okay, is there, what's the end date on that? The end date is 8-11 of 2020. Is that an accurate record of what you received from Agnex? Uh, this is a part of it. There was um, one or two other documents. What were the other one or two documents? Uh, one of the documents was um, the account user information essentially the 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 sign in of bush 54 what that is associated to i think it had a gmail address okay um, the other document was a uh, a similar record set that's um I'm trying to think of a good way to explain this this document details every time that the device was used to do a real-time gps location okay so essentially this, every time there's a line item here with the date and time, uh, the user Bush 5411 logged into that application and checked the location of that device. Okay. The other document is when there was a subs uh, subscription associated with the device in which you could check past GPS location history. In addition, the device has some diagnostic ability to diagnose mechanical issues with the vehicle. That is detailed in the separate document. I'd move to admit the portion of people's proposed Exhibit 6. Objection. I understand the court's ruling on business records, but I just am renewing my objection to any sort of report like that. Thank you. I will make my preliminary examples. Thank you. Just to clarify, 
uh, when Mr. Warner didn't want to give you um, the cell phone for that he had the data on for D, did you eventually get that phone? Yes, ma'am. Okay. You testified that as a part of your investigation, you were given all of the evidence, correct? Everything the Sheriff's Department had collected, yes. Were you given body cams as a part of the evidence that you had? Yes. All right. And were you given a body camera dated April 25th, 2021? Yes. Okay. And tell me um, what the topic of that body cam that you watched was. Uh, 42521 um, is the initial responding deputy, Deputy Hall, arriving to the Munger farm and making contact with Dale Warner after the initial missing persons report was filed by the, by the adult children. Okay, and you have that and you've provided that for today, correct? Yes. At this time, I'd like to play um, Deputy Hall's body camera from April 25th, 2021. I already had a prior objection. Thank you.
So then I loaded up another bass, and I went back up by Odyssey, and I was springing. And then uh, Raquel called me, her daughter, not her daughter, but Stephanie Mom, called me, and said, Raquel called her, she can't find her mom. And I said, well, she's at the house, she's in there laying on the couch. Uh, excuse me, so she couldn't find her, and then I called Raquel, <clears throat> and I says, your mom's not there? She was just there, you know, when I was there yeah. an hour or two ago. She said, no, she's not here. And I says, well, I'll be done springing here shortly, and I'll be back. So about, I don't know, half an hour, 45 minutes later, I got back here and I went in the house and she was gone. And uh, I walked around in the house, went in the bathroom, while her hair curler's gone, her um, hair dryer's gone, her makeup bag's gone, and she has a go bag packed all the time. I mean, this isn't the first time she's, she's uh, left. Usually she takes off and goes to her son's house and stays for a day or so. <laughs> That cost, yeah, and you know, you yeah, yeah. Usually you know, so she gets all pissed off and takes off and goes over there for a day. Um, this time the difference is it's, she ain't gets it anymore. Right. I was when she said her mom wasn't here, and I went and seen all that stuff gone. I wasn't real concerned because you know, she takes, does it all the time. She goes over to Zach's house and stays. So sure. She'll cool off and she'll come back home. Well, nobody get hold of her. <clears throat> when Zach came here, I says. She's at your house. I know she is. You're just telling me a story. You know, you're probably right to say that. Yeah, you're absolutely. For, yeah. You know, and, and he says he's not. Well, I wasn't real convinced of it for a while. I am now. It's, you know, it's, yeah. <clears throat> but nobody get hold of her. So, but she didn't take her vehicle. She accused me of taking the key last night. Well, I said, you were home before I was. How could I take your key? Sure. <clears throat> but I think it was because of the migraine. She gets to where she can't see and she can't talk. It gets so bad. And uh, I, I don't know. But then she was gone. She took all her bags. So somebody picked her up. So she, she's with someone somewhere. Okay. Do you know of anybody who... Uh, I don't. They called everybody that... <clears throat> you know, like I said, I figured she was with Zach. But they're for right. someone. Right. Um, I mean, I don't know what else to do other than wait a day or so and see what sure, I she know. shows up. I mean, yeah, I mean, if you saw I, mean, I don't want to get everybody all fired up. The kids are all fired up and call police. You know, this isn't the first time she's done this, guys. The first thing is she's not communicating with anybody. Right. But the only thing that's really strange, too, is this time she put her wedding ring on my desk. Uh, in the office. Yeah, she's, she's never done that before. Yeah, that is not. Right. So she set this on my desk in the office, and she went in. I don't know. Yeah, I'm yeah. just puzzled. If, well, I you know, I'm concerned because my daughter's wondering what the hell's going on, and mm -hmm. I'm just gonna tell her, you know, mom's working things out. She's right. frustrated. So. Right. And they, her kids are insinuating that she normally has never left about you guys' as daughter. Yeah, that's right. that's the other strange thing is. <clears throat> our daughter went over to my brother's. He's got daughters close to her age. She went over there last night and stayed. And <clears throat> I, I don't know. It's really weird. Yeah, but totally. I mean, I would think something was up, but she took her stuff. So I mean, she, it's not like somebody forced her to go anywhere. Or sure. Something. I mean, she, sure. Took her, she took her clothes and took her, you know, her curling iron and that stuff. So I and do you guys have any like farm trucks or anything like that? She would have been. Pissed off, jumped in, taking No, that's everything's here. You know, right. there's 15 semis out back, and <clears throat> everything's here. Okay. The employee that she has on her case with, he was never here today. He was going to come clean his truck up. He never showed up. And the other one was here this morning and took a load of line, but he was up. She he left here at 2 o'clock in the morning or 3, and he just got back a few hours ago. Okay. You know, so, I mean, it ain't nothing with them. Right. I don't, but I, I mean, she's right. had all the occasions with quite a few people. Wired, you know, my wife. <laughs> I, I don't know, but she's, <clears throat> she's in your face and tell you how it is. I mean, right. Yeah, I get that. But these kinds of things happen quite often. I mean, that's I told my coach, I didn't want to call anybody. I was going to come into the office in the morning and call you. I guess you can't go to the office and not get here. Can you go to the office? You can go to the front lot. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah. Um, I mean, we'll it, it we'll get everybody all fired up and then she yeah. shows up a day or two later. No, yeah. She's like an asshole. Yeah. You know, get everybody fired up. Yeah, she'll, she'll, be she'll be pissed that you call the police. Right, right. right. So, uh, do you know how much <clears throat> cash she normally carries in her purse? A lot. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> so they, 
the one son had said that he signed her bank statements or something and he checked and she said no activity. No, well, she usually has a lot of cash. She carries a lot of cash. Okay. But, I mean, I, I don't know. I, okay. Until so another day goes by. Right. I'm concerned, but I'm not, you know, alarmed yet. Right. Like tomorrow That's night, great. we ain't heard nothing. Well, yeah, we need to start. Figuring it's out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's one thing to be, <coughs> wife to be pissed off and take off. Well, like, you know, that's, we got really, we we three different businesses here, so the tensions are high all the time. Sure. It's all the time. Sure. It's what you're you married. You're going yeah. To well, that's the guy here, too. We got nine kids. Yeah. It's, it's a challenge. Now, I can imagine that. Absolutely. So, <coughs> uh, we tried pinging your cell phone. Okay. Nothing. The last thing was home here, and that was at seven something in the morning. So uh, I'm not sure she clearly doesn't have a phone working. Is she a person who's normally keeps your phone on her hip, or is she pretty never without it? Never without it. But I told the other kids she's got a second phone, but she doesn't let anybody know she's got another phone. Do you have a phone with her? No, it's a secret phone that she doesn't know that I know she has it. But why would she have it? I have no idea. I have from her about it because I didn't want the confrontation, but I know she has another phone. Okay. Well, that that <coughs> might so, be an important chunk of information there. So, if so she calls. Phone, I mean, she got another phone. She calls somebody on, on that phone. I'm sure. Okay. Because and the reason I know she has another phone is when we were in Florida, she tried telling me it was my daughter's phone. And I, I didn't say nothing. It was my vacation. I wasn't going to get it to her. That's my phone. Whatever. It's my daughter's phone. It was. So I was like, no. But originally. Went to Mexico, it's been around quite a while ago, and she had two phones in her bag and was unpacking her room. And she said, Oh, that phone was in the room. That was in the room, and somebody else, I'll take it down the front desk and turn it in. But I said, no, you got to choose your battle. I had to that. There's a lot of little, other little things, but I mean, if she do not show up, I'm going to start digging and figuring them out. Right, absolutely. I'd say, I mean, it's only been. Well, I mean, it's only been 13 hours since yeah, you saw her. Yeah, well, the cell phone thing, 12 hours and 7 and 7 by yeah. now. Right. So I would definitely say, though, if by tomorrow morning we still have nothing on her, I'd be digging through paperwork to see if you can find anything where the cell phone would be. If she has a different one that she's keeping on her, and we can ping that, that'll give us a location. She's very, she's got her car, she parts her car a lot, so. She's very, very secretive what she's doing. <laughs> Fair, enough. Fair enough. I don't know everything you're doing, but you can't know what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what we're going to be. Well, I appreciate it, sir. I'll get out of your hair. Um, at this point, I got really nothing to go off of. I'm just waiting out. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know what else. To, no, I don't want to get all excited yet. Sure. <coughs> all right. A couple more days go by, then I'll see you. Yeah, we'll yeah. figure something out. All right. Absolutely. So, okay. She, the way she left, she doesn't want to be. She doesn't want anybody to know where she's at. So I mean, yeah. Obviously, she knows what she's doing because we can't find her. Right. Right. No, I get that. I yeah, absolutely get that. Okay. All right. I will. Uh, I'll clear out of here. And if, if she does show up, please give us a call. Okay. okay. You got a card, kids? Yes. yes. I'll give her that. Um, for whatever reason, she shows up. She comes back. She's fine. Um, no foul, no foul, no foul. Right, just call it the central dispatch. They'll let me know, yeah. and uh, That's that way. Yep. So, all right. You're all related right. to Matt Hall or Matt Hall? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yep. He's my cousin. Okay. So, and Marty, no Marty then. Yep. 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 All of those guys. So who's your parents then? Uh, Mike and Lisa. Mike and Lisa. So how how are they related to Gary then? To Matt's dad. That would be then we might be talking about a different side here. Um, I'm talking Matt Hall. Matt, I, I've got a cousin, Matt Hall, from like the St. Creek area. Okay, this one's from right from Brown Hansen area. Oh, there, no. Okay. No, sorry. <laughs> there, there's some of us running all. Yeah, there's plenty. So I, I appreciate it.
current at this time I would move to admit people's proposed 15 H none other than what I'd already placed on the record thank you Sir, through the course of this investigation, did you learn the value of Dee's wedding ring? Yes. Okay, what was that? Uh, approximately $30,000. Okay, we approach. The court is going to be in recess, um, and we will continue this preliminary examination at a later date once that's confirmed by the parties.